Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet a plush plant wrap, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description or simply go to your favorite search engine and type in Moogly plush plant wrap and the pattern should pop right up. To make this pattern, we'll be using a USQ 16 millimeter crochet hook. Sometimes those are 15.75 millimeter, so if that's what you've got, that's fine. We're also using Bernat plush big yarn, which is a number seven jumbo weight yarn. Additionally, I've used one and five eighths inch buttons. How many you may use will depend on what size of wrap you make. You'll also want to have some sewing thread and a sewing needle in order to sew on that button. Stitch markers are also helpful, but are definitely optional. This plush plant wrap is a completely customizable pattern. Inside the written pattern, you'll see how to make this to fit whatever pot or jar or whatever container that you want to make look a little bit fancier. Here you can see I've got an old food jar that I'm using to grow one of my Monstera cuttings. With a little bit of Bernat plush big yarn and some crochet, I'm able to make this jar look a whole lot nicer when it's sitting on my shelf. From here overhead, you can still see the jar and it's got some water in it, but if I tip it a little bit, you can see this has a whole new look from the outside. Again, this is a completely customizable pattern, so you'll want to have whatever container that you're covering nearby as you crochet so you can make sure it fits. Now let's go ahead and get started making our own plush plant wrap. Now as I've mentioned, this pattern is meant to be completely customizable to whatever size you need. So therefore, specific numbers aren't given in the pattern. You can start with any odd number of stitches. As you can see here, it is completely adjustable even after you've made it. It's the holes in between the stitches that allow the button to go through. So you can leave it a little more open for bigger containers, or when I'm done with this one, if I want to put it around a smaller container, I can just button it further on in. Now this is a particularly small size, so that would be rather difficult, but I've also made a much larger one to fit around a hydrangea pot, which you can see inside the written pattern. While it is customizable and a gauge is given in the pattern, no math beyond counting your stitches is required. You're working side to side through the end, so the width of your first row should be the height of your container, and the length is whatever is long enough to wrap around the container that you're using. So, as I've shown, a little bit longer is better than too short. You can always button it a little bit closer. Because it's this style, that means the bottom is also open. Not as important with a jar like this, but on a larger pot where you're going to be watering it and you need drainage, you can, with tension, set this a little bit higher so that you leave a little bit of space at the bottom for drainage inside whatever tray you've got your plant in. Additionally, you can remove it then for easy washing and reusing on other containers. Now, again, how many buttons you're going to use depends on what size you're making. For this little jar version here, I've just used one, but for my big hydrangea, I used two buttons just set a little bit further apart. It's completely up to you for your style, however many buttons you think will be necessary to hold it onto your container. If you choose to use a different yarn, perhaps one not quite as thick as our Bernat plush big, then you'll want to make sure that whatever buttons you use are also going to fit through the holes of that fabric because those holes will probably be a different size than the holes that you get with this particular fabric. Now I sewed the button to the inside of our piece here so that when I button it on, the button is hidden. If you'd prefer, you can put the buttons on the outside so that they do show for a different look. Again, it's your project. You can do it however you like. Let's go ahead and make a plush plant wrap together. So I've started here with a slip knot on my hook and our first row is going to be foundation single crochet in again, whatever length of row we need for the height of the, of the uh, container that we're trying to cover. So to make the foundation single crochet, as I say, I've got my slip knot here on my hook. I'm gonna start by chaining two. And then I'm going to go into the underneath loop not the top two loops, but the one underneath of the very first chain, the one right next to the slip knot. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There we go. I always make sure to push your loops up on to the widest part of the hook so that they're all the same size. 
There we go. Now, those chain twos aren't going to count as any stitches. We're making our first foundation single crochet right here. So that loop I just pulled up is going to be essentially the chain at the bottom of our first stitch. We yarn over and pull a loop up through that chain. Now we've got two loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull through two to finish our first single crochet. So if you'd like, this is where those stitch markers can come in really handy. Again, totally optional, but if you'd like, you can go ahead and mark the top of the first stitch of each round. Now, with this great big yarn, I find I can really only mark one of those loops, but that should be enough to let me know that's the top of that stitch right there. So now we continue making foundation single crochets until we get to whatever height we want for our container. So here you're going to sort of have to make a decision because we do need an odd number of stitches for this to work. So you're going to have to make a choice. Do you want it to be a little bit taller than your container when it's something like this jar where the top isn't terribly pretty? That can be a great idea. Really hide some more of that. If it's something where you're going to be watering it a lot and you want to make sure that the bottom of your wrap doesn't dip into that water, then maybe you'll want to make it a little bit shorter. You can definitely customize it to whatever sort of container or needs you have. So I'm just crocheting a few stitches here. Let's see, we have made four stitches. So I'm going to need at least one more. Again, we need to have an odd number. There we go. And this would be about the right height for maybe something like a small pickle jar or something like that. Again, you'll want to have your container with you so you can sort of hold it right up to here. For this particular one, I think I used seven stitches and I gave the number in the pattern that I used for the taller nine inch pot that I was covering as well. But for today, let's go with five. So once we've made our odd number of stitches, and it's the right height for however wide or tall rather we want our wrap to be, then we are done with row one. So now we're ready to turn for row two and we'll begin with a chainless starting double crochet. If you'd prefer, you can chain three instead, but I do think this gives a nicer finished look. I'm going to pull my loop up to the height of a double crochet, secure the top of the loop with my fingers, yarn over with the loop itself, insert my hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull a loop up through the stitch. Now you'll notice I still have my finger on the top of that loop. I'm going to yarn over and pull through and behind the yarn over. And now when I'm down to these last two loops, I'll go ahead and release that loop with my finger, yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So there is our first stitch for row two. After that, we work a beginning large star stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hook and you see that loop right there at the side of our chainless starting double crochet. If you've used a chain three instead, it will be the underneath hump of that last chain you made. We're going to insert our hook under that loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're going to come down here and look at the bottom half of this double crochet. If you use the chain three, just go into the bottom one of those chains as you did the top one. We, however, are going to go into that loop right back here, this one. It is sort of the back loop of the bottom half of that double crochet stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. It's a little easier now that I've pulled through to see where that stitch is coming from. Then we've got three loops on our hook so far. We're going to go back into that first stitch there, yarn over and pull up a loop. That brings us to four loops. And you'll notice as I pull through, I'm making each of these successive loops a little bit higher. Then we're going to pull up a loop from each of the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Now I'm going to pull up on my hook, nice and strong here. Make sure we've got six loops on our hook and that last loop is a little bit taller than some of these first loops. It's gonna make it a lot easier to make our next stitch if you make this last loop just a little bit bigger. Now we're going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through all six of these loops. So to make that a little easier, I'm going to point the hook portion of my hook down and lift up on those loops as I pull it through to give myself some room. So I'll yarn over and pull that all the way through. And then we chain one to finish up our first stitch there. 
Then we're ready to make the rest of our star stitches on a cross. Now we've got just a little sample here, so I've only got room for one more, but you'll see how it is made. We're going to look for that loop at the top again. You see how now after we made that chain one, we've got that loop right there. That's where we're gonna start now. Insert our hook and pull up a loop. Look for that back loop again, the bottom half, that last loop that went into the stitch before, we wanna go under just the one in back. Yarn over and pull up our loop. All right, see that leaves that loop free and it gives it a really nice look. Then we go back in that same stitch that we went into last time we made that last stitch, then the next two stitches again. So there's one. I'm gonna go ahead and get my stitch marker out of the way here. I know this is my last stitch. So I go right into this one and pull up our loop. Once again, I've got my six loops on my hook, so I can yarn over, turn that down, and pull through all six. And then we chain one again. There we go. Now, depending on how tall your container is, you may have several more stitches here to make, just like this last set of stitches we made, the star stitch and then the chain one. You do that until your last loop there goes into that final stitch. Then we're ready to finish up our row. We go again into that chain to pull up a loop. And then we just go right down straight into that last stitch. And it's sort of a modified linked double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. And yarn over and pull through two. And just like that, we have finished row two. So let's look at our finished row two for just a moment before we move on to row three. If we count our stitches, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. If you'll remember, we had five stitches, that odd number in row one. We have one more stitch in row two. In row three, we're gonna go back to single crochet and we're gonna take that extra stitch back out. So what we do for row three is we simply chain one and turn, and then we're going to work a single crochet in each stitch across, except for the stitch right before the last stitch. So there's the first stitch. Then we go right in that chain one. That's two stitches. Go in the top of the star stitch here. That's three. We've got another chain one here. That's four. And if we look, there are two stitches left here. The top of that first star stitch and that first chainless starting double crochet. So to get back to having five stitches, we're going to skip that stitch there and just go right into this one. Don't chain or anything like that, just skip right on over it. Oops, grab too many loops. Let me try that again. I'm gonna get under just those top two loops and finish up that single crochet. There we are. So now if we count our stitches for row three, we're back to one, two, three, four, five stitches. Alrighty, so now all you have to do is repeat rows two and three. Remember row two is our star stitches, row three is our single crochets, back and forth in rows until your piece is long enough to wrap around your container. Now one thing to note is if you take a tape measure and measure around your container and then try to make your piece that same length, you're going to need a couple extra inches. It's just the act of wrapping it around and having such thick yarn means you need a couple extra inches of length to get all the way around. Plus, you wanna make sure that it's going to overlap that little bit. So make sure you get at least right up to that last row going around your container before we move on to our very last row of the pattern. So once you've got your wrap made long enough to wrap around your container, then we're going to add one last row. Now, right now we're on the wrong side of our fabric and this side is the right side. So we want to just finish up with one row of single crochet. Now in the previous row, we took out that extra stitch for our final row, we can just single crochet and each stitch across. This is going to give us one final row on the right side, which is of course the row that will show. And it just gives us a little bit more length here to make sure we've got space for our button and make sure we can get to where it overlaps. So here we go, right there in the last stitch. So I have one, two, three, four, five stitches. I can go ahead and break my yarn and weave in my ends. 
With this particular yarn, I do recommend that you take a little bit of sewing thread and a sewing needle and sew down those ends after you've woven them in. After you've woven in and sewn in those ends, then what you're going to want to do is sew in one of those buttons. As I said, this is our right side, so I like to sew the buttons to the wrong side with just a little bit of matching thread. It doesn't have to actually match because it's on the inside, so it's not going to show. You can see here on the yellow one that I made previously, I had sort of a tan off-white colored thread, but it's just whatever's handy. You're just going to sew it right into that strand of yarn right there, so it's not going to show at all from the outside, and it becomes a completely hidden button. Then, once it's all together, you take your jar or container and simply wrap it around and button it on. This one I originally made for actually a slightly smaller jar, so it's a tight fit, but you can see there's a good amount of stretch here, and it actually looks really pretty. I just put the seam to the back when I put my plant up on my shelf, and you're all set. And that's how to crochet the plush plant wrap. Again, you'll find this free pattern with all the information you need to make it in your own custom size on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.